It is a simple orange brick building, modern, domestic, stolid. Everyday pedestrians stroll past, unaware that the Grand Majestic, with its concierge, its doormen, its hallmen and porters, was home to one of the most brazen attempted murders in New York history. Conceived in the heyday of the Roaring Twenties by architect and developer Erwin Channon, the Majestic was intended to be a towering affair with 24-room apartments and grand views of Central Park. But the stock market crashed, just as construction began, and Shannon immediately began to downsize. A dozen floors were lopped off, and apartments were scaled back to a more modest and affordable size, 14 rooms at most. It didn't matter. By 1932, not even half the apartments were finished, and the banks, in lieu of foreclosing, tried to collect rent where they could. Still, after the Depression, the Majestic recovered nicely. Milton Berle, Walter Winchell, and Zero Mustel all lived there, but their notoriety was eclipsed by residents like Meyer Lansky, Lucky Luciano, and Frank Castello, who was almost gunned down in the Majestic lobby. In 1957, as he was walking towards the elevator, Castello was approached by the driver and protege of rival Vito Genovese, Vincent the Chin Gigante, who shouted, This is for you, Frank. Giganti fired his pistol, striking Costello in the head. But Costello, startled by Giganti's inadvertent warning, turned just in time, and the bullet grazed his skull. Giganti fled the Majestic, went on the lam, and was acquitted when Costello refused to identify him as the shooter. In time, memory of that attempted hit faded, and the Majestic became a standard bearer of luxury living on Central Park West. In 1997, Ian Schrager, the legendary nightclub and hotel impresario, bought two penthouse apartments for the then record-setting price of $9 million and combined them. Schrager hired Philippe Stark to design the interiors, which included a one-ton bathtub. To get it up to the 19th floor, one lane of Central Park West had to be closed while it was lifted with a construction crane. But Schrager never moved in. He divorced his wife and sold the apartment for $12.3 million. A few years later, the same apartment was sold again to Susan Soros, ex-wife of billionaire George Soros, for $25 million. Last year, Soros put it on the market for $50 million. If only Erwin Shannon had lived long enough, he might have avoided foreclosure.